How are you, Fred? Rich, I'm doing great, and you've improved each and every year. <laughs> <laughs> I only know one speed, Fred. You know what I mean? It's what beats inside. That's about well, it. Well, you, you are know? great. You kept the program rolling, believe me. Thanks, Fred. I appreciate it. That jacket dinner is unlike anything else. What's it like for you to go back there and, and wear the gold jacket and stand in the gauntlet welcoming in new guys into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? What's it been like oh, for it's you? A, it's unbelievable because, you know, you, now, you number one, you get to be around – uh, all, all, all your Hall of Fame brothers for at least a few days, and you get to see them all of them that night, and then to uh, be there when all the new inductees are uh, being introduced and going into the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, and seeing the look on their eyes and how they approach everything and how they feel and the emotion you see in their face, uh, it's amazing. You know, it's just uh, just something so you know spectacular. That it's 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 fun to be around. It's really an honor to be around all that and to be in a select group as we have. Uh, it's just amazing. What was it like being? I, it looks like it was your sixth year in the National Football League. Sixth year, I guess, with the Raiders. Let's put it that way, since the merger happened while you were with the Raiders. And a uh, quarterback named Ken Stabler strolled into camp. What was that moment like, Fred? It was going to be late nights. No. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that right away, huh? You knew that right away? Right away. You could see it right away. No. But, no, you know, you're looking at somebody, a young kid coming in, and, you know, uh, you know, very few times you see guys that are young guys coming into the league, and they just have that poise about them, you know, and just that poise and demeanor that they carry, that they know what they're doing. They're in total control of themselves. They have control of what they're supposed to be doing out there on the field and uh, very comfortable. It gives you a very Kenny – uh, Kenny always, from the beginning, was always a player to be around that made you feel comfortable and confident. So how did he fit the mold in a way that, you know, maybe no, no other quarterback did for, for the Raiders and the, the Davis silver and black? Right. Well, the, the great thing now, you know, even in that era and even up until, the, you know, to the present day, you know, you have very few quarterbacks coming into the league because Darryl, Darryl was starting at the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when Kenny replaced Darryl, well, uh, as a team, we didn't lose a beat. You know, uh, Kenny just fit right in, and we just continued the success with Kenny uh, for the next number of years. And there was never really a change, uh, adjustments, uh, what we had to do, like shorten the game plan down, uh, make it a little bit more, uh, you know, more fundamental in practice, that type of thing. Kenny just fit right in and just, you know, just took the reins over from Daryl and just carried us on uh, further. Did Madden have to ever have to discipline him for off the field stuff in a way that uh, we had, we didn't know, Fred? All, all John cared about is if you showed up, you were on time, and you practiced hard. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but, but no, ne ne never. You know, John, John always, uh, you know, being around John for a number of years, uh, playing for him, you know, he was always the guy that really didn't want to get into uh, finding players, uh, you know, sort of say reprimanding players for, you know, how they were acting or whatever. We had such a great team that we kind of uh, did that ourselves internally. And when things did happen, you know, and John was uh, forced to do things or find people or, you know, do whatever he had to do if somebody got out of line. You know, John did it, but that was not John's uh, character. You know, he, he always wanted to stay away from that, and uh, we had enough confidence in John and the way he treated us that he, he was always trying to avoid that. He didn't want guys to be in trouble. Uh, like I said, he had very few rules for us, and we basically, you know, we, we were there when, he, when we were supposed to be, and uh, I'm sure there are, you know, a few guys got fined for being, you know, late for curfew, and but we never had guys that were way out of line as far as putting him in such a position where he had to be, you know, the overseer. Fred Bolitnikoff joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you have a favorite Stabler moment in the huddle? Favorite moment, Stabler, or maybe on a, on a pass play that you recall? Yeah, I can particular? remember a few years back when we were playing, and we were playing in New Orleans, and I can't remember the defensive back. And uh, he, he was a very smaller guy, quick. And Kenny threw me a, a pass going inside, and the guy jumped inside of me and picked off the ball. And 
you know, raced down the sideline, and Kenny was coming, you know, kind of drifted out that way, and the guy gave Kenny a little bit of a move, and he, Kenny fell on the ground, obviously, and the uh, guy ran it back for a touchdown, and Kenny looked at me, and I said, hey, I said, you threw the ball, and then we're walking on the field. I said, hey, boy, you got to practice those tackling drills, man. I said, you got to stop that guy. And he just looked at me and started laughing, you know, <laughs> because it was such a such a unique moment, you know, where – uh, nowadays, you know, you see quarterbacks, how they handle uh, uh, players on offense, on the sideline. Uh, Kenny was never, ever that way. And he always had so much respect for the guys on the field that, you know, talking and uh, having a conversation was more Kenny's way uh, than getting mad at somebody. How would he have enjoyed or handled or maybe not really wanted the spotlight on this weekend that just passed if you were alive for it, Fred? Oh, man, we'll still be back there partying. Gee, we wouldn't got out of town. I don't know who would put up with us by after four or five days, but uh, he would have loved it. You know, the, the sad thing about, about him not being there was the fact that so many people missed out on being around him and how he was so engaging. Uh, he, he knew all the guys in the Hall of Fame, played against them, played with them, uh, was what you know at the end of his career, different couple different teams, but you know Kenny would have just fit right in. And uh, guys always love Kenny. Guys in in the Hall of Fame, as you saw uh, when we did the unveiling, uh, it was unbelievable the response everybody gave that was sitting up there on stage. You know, yeah, every everybody missed out not having been able to be around him. Yeah, Fred, we just showed to the TV audience and I'll tell the radio audience as well that moment when uh, one of one of uh, Ken Stabler's grandsons broke down. You were right there in between the two grandsons, and there was the stork, and there was Art Shell, and Willie Brown, and uh, the ghost, and you. Uh, I mean, I, I was just choking up just looking at it. Fred, what was uh, it like being in the middle of all that? Oh, unbelievable, because, you know, Justin and Jack, you know, they they love their grandfather so much. They thought so much of him, and being up there and uh, – because uh, we we thought just the three of us were going to be there. Then all of a sudden, I guess Willie got Willie Brown got everybody rounded up to go up there. So it was such a great moment yeah. to have everybody that played with Kenny up there. Uh, you know, obviously all Hall of Famers, and uh, that's how much they felt. Uh, you know, felt for Kenny and how much they loved Kenny. So it, it, it was great. Even like the parade that we're in, and the boy I rode with the boys, and uh, they sat up in the back, and I rode shotgun. And man, the ovation that they were getting from people on both sides of the street where we're going was just unbelievable. I, I felt so happy for them, those guys, because then they got to see how many people other than the family loved their dad, loved their grandfather. Fred Bolitnikoff, Hall of Famer here on the Rich Eisen Show. A couple more questions for you, Fred. First one, did Franco Harris pick that ball off the turf in Pittsburgh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, a couple of years ago at our lunch at Nitschke lunch, and Bobby Bell got up, and we got, we have a free reign with whatever we want to talk about or mm -hmm. say. And Bobby Bell, and, and sincerely, he he made a, a talk about you know that how much that our association and, and closeness has to be really taken into effect each and every year we're together because each and every year one of us you know passes on and is not there the following year. So. Uh, two years ago, I got up and I said, well, Bobby, I'm going to buy the Bobby Bell road just in case I'm not here next year. I said, Franco, did you really catch that ball? <laughs> and? And? And, and he, just said, he just laughed. <laughs> so do we take that as a yes or a no, Fred? I, mean, I, I take it as a no. <laughs> <laughs> did not catch it. Okay. Because, I mean, could you imagine, Fred, if there was instant replay back then? You'd, we'd still be under the hood right now looking at that oh play, right? Oh, my God, I'll tell you what. Uh, you, you know something? If, if we had instant replay and they had reversed that call, that place would have went absolutely berserk. I don't know. You know, we might have not even got off the – our play might not even got off the ground that night. <laughs> and and what do you think of all these gloves that receivers are out there wearing right now? With, with You know what? They, they talk about stick them and all this stuff and – you know, for years with with us using it and, you know, me getting the blame and Lester getting the blame. But, you know, you put on these gloves nowadays, it's it's unbelievable. They're, they're better than stick them. The gloves are better than stick them. It's amazing, you know, because we I was talking about that with, with Lynn Swan and John Stallworth the, uh, back there when I was there visiting with them. And uh, we just started laughing, you know, because we we're just talking about those gloves 
are amazing nowadays for for uh, for receivers. If you drop a ball with those gloves, you're wearing those gloves, and you shouldn't be out there on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these balls are being caught now, Fred, with a, with a thumb and forefinger. You seeing that? Oh man, I'll tell you what. The way these guys are catching passes. You know, with, with, with gloves or not, you know, I mean, they're making these kids nowadays are making spectacular plays, you know, and and, you know, it's a you know what? It's a, this, there's a period of time going to professional football right now that I kind of relate it back to the era that I played in where, where, where when I when the era I played, in, there were a ton of great receivers. And now you see all these kids in this era. I mean, you can't pick out a favorite. If someone said to you, you know, who's your favorite wide receiver, all this stuff, there's so many of them, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. And the plays they make, the catches they make, the number of balls they catch, it's just uh, fantastic. And so uh, you got Amari Cooper up there now of the current state of the Raiders with uh, Derek Carr and Latavius Murray. And, you know, the bandwagon for the Raiders is getting full for 2016, Fred. There's a lot of you people better, hopping hey, on it right now. Great. You better grab onto that bumper of that car because here we go. It's going to be it's going to be a fantastic year for him. And I mean, obviously, I love Amari Cooper, Crabtree. I love you know those two are an outstanding combination to have on your team. And then with Derek, I mean, he's just making such an impact. And you know, he just you know one thing about Derek, he looks like a professional quarterback. That's that's a great thing about him, and he makes. Uh, he, he he can make all the throws, and that's an amazing thing. And he has people on the offense uh, that can make plays, and right. they keep getting better and better. And you know, last year, sure they go seven and nine, but there were some games they were in that they had a chance, and some games that they kind of threw away at the end or whatever. But uh, but they're right there. I you know, from the beginning of the year when I was asked about them in a, in the Western Division, which you know is always a tough division to play in. I picked them to win a division. I'm sticking by my guns too, Rich. You're not changing my mind. You, now, what, those guns, you stick them to stick to those guns, right? Use a stick you them, need Fred? to stick right? them okay, too, very believe good. me. Fred, love chatting with you. Don't be a stranger, okay? I'd love to have you on more often. I'd love it. Well, I'd love to. And, you know, every time I get to see you in person, yeah, you know, I love seeing you. Thanks. You've always treated me so well, Please. and I think the world of you. Th same to you, Fred. Thank you. Thanks for calling, and we'll chat soon, hopefully. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.